Hi, it's Tom Gregory here and welcome to this video about the AWS networking fundamentals you need to know in order to properly deploy your containers into the AWS cloud. And maybe you've heard of some of these terms before like VPCs, subnets, internet gateways, NAT gateways, and perhaps you've had a vague understanding of what these mean. Well, in this video, I'm going to be properly explaining all of these resources in simple terms. And that's going to help you when you're writing software to run in containers to be able to properly deploy, support, and secure it in AWS. So let's get right into it. And we're going to start off by talking about the AWS VPC, which is the virtual private cloud. And you can think of this as your own private network within Amazon's cloud infrastructure. And much like if you were running your own data center, you can configure a VPC as you like and deploy whatever resources you want to in there. And the benefits, of course, are that you don't have to provision any hardware yourself, and that gets messy very quickly. As your VPC is created within AWS's own data centers. And secondly, you benefit from the scalable nature of AWS by being able to provision whatever AWS resources you need whenever you need them and all of this at the click of a button. And as you know, or probably have guessed, you're not the only person using the AWS cloud. And in fact, your VPC is one of many within AWS. But fortunately, security is at the core of AWS, so you don't need to worry about anyone else getting access to your VPC unless you specifically want them to. And by sharing data centers with many other AWS customers, you benefit from economies of scale. So this means that AWS pricing is often quite a bit cheaper than what you might pay if you're managing your own data center. Plus they have a ton more resources that you can use that you don't normally get when you're running your own data center. And remember that your VPC is essentially the network where you're gonna be deploying your containers. And these containers will need their own private IP address because they need to be called by other services. And your VPC, when you create it, will need to be provided with a pool of IP addresses that it can use to create containers or also EC2 instances. And don't worry, we're gonna be getting into all of that, how to set that up using the default VPC provided by AWS. But first up, let's talk about subnets. And the way I like to think of subnets is it's a way to slice up your VPC pie. <laughs> and where a VPC specifies an IP address range, a subnet allows you to group those IP addresses into even smaller subnetworks called subnets. And that's great because you can then assign different behaviors to each of those subnets. Here, our friend Jimmy has split his VPC into two subnets, subnet one and subnet two, very imaginative. So what reasons might he have for doing such a thing? Well, first up, he might want to deploy services into different AWS availability zones. And just a quick recap on regions and availability zones. A region is a particular geographical area and an availability zone is a specific data center within that area. And there's at least two availability zones per region. And by deploying it into different availability zones, it enables you to create highly available fault tolerant services. And since the subnet can only exist in a single availability zone, to deploy across multiple availability zones, you need multiple subnets. So that's one reason. The second reason is he might want to improve the security of one of the subnets by hiding it from the internet. And this is achieved by creating what's called a private subnet. And this is a subnet which can't be directly accessed from the internet and which doesn't have direct access to the internet. And this is perfect for deploying databases or other backend services that you might have as they're normally only accessed by other internal services. And linking this back to containers, when you do deploy containers into a VPC, you also need to specify the subnets that they should deploy into. And as an example, imagine that you're deploying an API service for an e-commerce site. And in this case, you could deploy multiple instances of the service across multiple subnets in different availability zones. And of course, this gives you high availability and scalability at the same time, meaning your users always have access to the API. So now that you've got VPCs and subnets sorted out, you're ready to deploy a container, right? 
Well, not exactly, because if you want to deploy a container that needs internet access, there's still one missing piece of this jigsaw. And that's where the AWS Internet Gateway comes in. And this is a resource that provides access from a container to the internet, as long as the container meets two criteria here. And the first one is that the container is deployed into a subnet that routes external traffic through the internet gateway. And this is known as a public subnet. And the second one is that the container has a public IP. And if these two criteria are met, then the container can make requests out to the internet. And this works two ways as well. So with an internet gateway attached to your subnet, not only can your containers call out to the internet, but they can also receive traffic from the internet as well. But let's be careful because sometimes you don't always want your container to be reachable from the internet. Imagine you have some service that only ever needs to be accessed internally. And following on from my rather crude e-commerce example earlier, this could be an analytics service for analyzing customer behavior. And it might need to be able to make requests out to the internet to gather market data for analytics purposes. But on the other hand, it shouldn't be able to be called from outside of the VPC. So it should kind of be this one-way request. And a private subnet would be perfect for this setup because we can make sure that the service doesn't have a public IP and can't be accessed from the internet. How though can we still provide the service with internet access in this scenario? And this is where something called a NAT gateway comes in. And a NAT gateway is AWS's answer to giving a container internet access without having to assign it a public IP. And it's kind of like the internet gateway for private subnets. And a NAT gateway has these properties and it's always assigned a fixed public IP address. And if you've got a container in a private subnet, then all traffic is routed through the NAT gateway. And it translates the private IP of your container to a public IP that's required for internet access. Hence its name of NAT gateway, which stands for Network Address Translator. And a quick note on NAT and internet gateways is that it's important to understand that they are horizontally scaled and highly available AWS resources. And this pretty well means that you don't need to think about them once you provision them because AWS makes sure that they're available all the time so you can always rely on them. And they're also super easy to create with a few clicks in the UI or through templating. And the last type of AWS resource we're gonna to cover today is the root table. And this is rules for your network traffic. So we figured out when to use an internet gateway and when to use a NAT gateway. But the question now is how do we actually tell our subnets to use these resources when trying to make requests out to the internet? And this is where the AWS root table comes in because they allow you to define rules to say where network traffic from a subnet is directed. So let's talk about the two types of root table rules that you might need to know about. So imagine you've got a container and I'm being really imaginative here and I'm gonna call it container A and it's deployed into a subnet in your VPC. So let's think about two scenarios where it might need to make requests. So container A might need to call container B which is in the same VPC. In this case, we're talking about local traffic and the target for this traffic is local or in other words, keep it within the VPC. And the other example is where the container array needs to access some other external service, and this might be out on the internet. So it needs to go external to the VPC. And in this case, we can decide whether the routing should be via an internet gateway or a NAT gateway. And actually a root table is attached to a subnet, and based on the rules within that root table, the traffic is able to flow in the right direction, depending on the destination. So in the example in this diagram, we have a root table attached to a public subnet, which has two rules. And the first rule means that any traffic with an internal IP address stays within the local network. And the second rule means that any traffic with an external IP address goes via the internet gateway and can get internet access. And because it's often a source of confusion, I just want to summarize the public versus private subnet. And a public subnet has a route to the internet via an internet gateway. And this means that containers deployed into this public subnet have internet access and can be accessed directly from the internet too, as long as they're assigned a public IP address. 
But on the other hand, a private subnet doesn't have a route to the internet via an internet gateway. And since it's not attached to an internet gateway, containers deployed there cannot be accessed directly from the internet. But containers can be provided with internet access from a private subnet by attaching a NAT gateway to that subnet. Now, I don't know about you, but I like an easy life. Unfortunately, the clever folks over at AWS HQ have provided us with a default VPC per region in which we might want to deploy our AWS resources. And with the default VPC, you get a few extra resources as well. And this includes a public subnet in each availability zone in the region. And with the public subnets, you get an internet gateway along with a root table, which sends your traffic from the public subnets via the internet gateway. And to have a look at your default VPC, you just sign into the AWS console and go to services VPCs, your VPCs, and look for the VPC with the default VPC column set to yes, and that's your default VPC. And importantly here, we can see the VPC ID and also the IPv4 CIDR range. And this is the IP address range that I mentioned earlier. And in this case, the 172.31.0016 range means that we have 65,536 IPs available. So plenty there to get going. We can also see the ID of the VPC's main route table. And this is the default route that applies to any subnets that don't have a specific route assigned to them. And we can click on the route tables ID here and then click on the routes tab. And here we can see the actual route table rules. And first up, we've got a rule for any traffic with a destination internal to the VPC and the target of that is local. So keep it within the VPC and any external traffic, which is the 0000 slash zero. This is the internet traffic and that goes via our default internet gateway. And finally, if we click on the subnet associations tab of the root table, this will tell us which subnets the root table is applied to. And here we've got three subnets listed, which correspond to the three default subnets created by AWS. And you might see more or fewer subnets depending on which region you're in, because different regions have a different number of availability zones. And actually, if we wanted to, we could click through on one of these subnet IDs to see more details. And you can see here that this subnet is in a specific availability zone. And if we click on a different one, we can see that it's in a different availability zone. So I definitely recommend logging into your own AWS account and having a click around to see how the default VPC fits together. And if you've got any questions at all, then feel free to comment down below. And one thing you might have noticed is that in the default VPC provided by AWS, we only get a public subnet. We don't get any private subnets. And don't worry because this is covered in another video which you can watch right here when it's available. And in that video, we'll be creating a VPC with public and private subnets using the templating language called AWS CloudFormation. So I hope you found value in this video and give it a like and subscribe if you found it helpful. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in another video on Tom Gregory Tech.